This is a tutorial designed to show you the latest ZRail features. ZRail is an intuitive tool for Maya. Most of the enhancement comes from the user feedbacks. We are eager to know how we can help the community. Your ideas are welcome. We still consider this version as a beta version, but it may still be great for your production. The core functions have been redesigned to speed up the performance and optimize the use of the memory. As a reminder, updates are free for those who have license yet. Looking at the user interface, you would already notice some new added features. We'll talk about them a bit later. Let's get started. As usual, set the source mesh, set it as a reference if needed so it won't be selected. We're creating a rail with left mouse click, then press enter. And as you can see, we can now change the span's amount while modifying the shape of the rail. The new version brings a lot more flexibility. As long as you have the construction history, you'd have a full control over it. As you might already know, you can change the subdivisions either by dragging shift and middle mouse click or by using the interface with the arrow buttons or the input field. The pinch slider shrinks the subdivisions located at the border of the current rail. This will produce a creasing edge in between the rails. The reset button set it back to the default value. It's even more convenient to just drag shift and middle mouse button directly, then go up and down adjusting the crease, right and left for changing the spans as mentioned earlier. If you're watching the previous tutorial, you've learned how to draw sliced rails with shift and left mouse click. These rails will mostly be closed since it goes through the surface. The start and the end points will be merged during the process. Likewise, you could deal with several strokes in a row to save time. The construction history displayed in a red blue dashed lines will work accordingly. Feel free to modify them at any time with the brushes. You will find the relax and the move brush mode in the interface, but you can still use the key combination control shift and middle mouse click to relax and drag middle click to move the vertices. Note that the dashed lines are adjusted while brushing the mesh. It stores the point interpolations to bring a non-destructive solution. For each of the brushes, you have sliders, strength, and radius. Back face culling is there to preserve the position of the vertices facing the opposite direction of the camera. This is true for relax and move brush mode. Freeze borders will take action during the relax mode only. To extend a rail, select first the entire loop by holding control shift and left click twice on the same vertex. You would notice that the arrow display which states the rail's direction. With that selection, create another slice stroke. While drawing it, you should should take in consideration the direction of the yellow arrow to avoid any unpredictable result. The newly created rail may sometimes need some adjustment. It looks like it's been twisted during the creation process. It's up to you to fix that by holding control and middle click, then dragging left or right. Obviously, you can still increase or decrease the subdivision amount on the fly. Furthermore, you can tweak the rail's borders as much as you want for fine tuning with the brushes. You still have control over the mesh construction unless you press enter or switch to another tool. In addition to the hand stroke, you now have access to several different 2D figures. They can be used during the slice mode or during the regular strokes. With the same idea in mind, the slicing method can work with a square or a circle shape from the right side of the geometry. As long as the rail and the selection are closed, you can still extend the rail even on a flat surface. It should help you to create of eye orbitals or any hard surface shapes. Feel free to use whatever shapes to build your extension. In the same way, the redraw function works with the figure. You may need to hold shift to reverse the direction of the closed figure before validation. 
This tool creates patch based on a ray projection. The display button helps you to understand how it works. The override handles gives you a representation of the projection distance. Any polygon above that distance will not be considered during the process. A user asked for more option for the bridge and merge command. We are happy to add the reverse option. The interesting part while creating a bridge now is that you can explicitly choose which direction it should go. Let's get back to the drawing tab. You've been asking for options to smooth hand strokes. The lazy mode would help with that. Strength value is pretty self-explanatory, but we have to look at the distance attribute. Higher is that value, the more segments will be affected during the process. Immediate values will reduce the average effect. If you like this tool, please rate it on our Gumroad. We'd appreciate your support. As usual, links are in the description, and don't forget to subscribe to get updates, notifications, and stay tuned for incoming stuff.